All right, so if you're having a leak in your radiator or radiator hose, um, you're gonna have to try to find the leak. But if you have a Toyota, particularly um, in the 2009 to 2012 range, most likely it is this uh, connector right here. So you can tell right here where that plastic is completely corroded. So what happens is this piece cracks on the inside of this smaller part of the hose, and then that's where the leak um, comes from. So we already took the clamps off of this, and the thing about this part is that you cannot buy um, this part on its own. You have to actually look for the uh, entire part of the radiator which comes with all the hoses as well as the connector. Okay so here's the uh, genuine Toyota part and you can see that it includes the entire piece so again um, the problem lies right there with that small piece right there but Toyota doesn't sell just this connector even though um, the parts guy at the dealership said that that's actually the most common reason why people have to get these replaced. So again, you have to buy this um, entire unit and replace that as a whole rather than just being able to um, pick up this piece and then swapping that out. So this piece right here um, needs to be swapped out. And again, this is the new piece that's going in. The biggest problem is getting this um, larger end piece. So if you look down there, um, you can see where it connects, but because of the uh, battery, you actually don't have a lot of space to work with. So again, um, just right there, you can see it. So you're gonna wanna remove the battery so that you have some space to work with down there to be able to pull out that um, hose and then attach the new one. Another piece you might want to remove is this front um, end plastic piece because it's, it's mounting and steadying the battery right there. So to remove that, uh, you'll notice these little um, push pins. So you're just going to push down with your screwdriver. Go around um, to all of them and then you're just going to push those in and then be able to pop out this um, plastic piece. So it looks like this when you pop it out. Now that the top panel is removed, you can see that this is screwed down right here. So we're gonna undo the screw here, as well as back there, and then this will be able to um, be removed. You're gonna wanna get a set of some uh, wide mouth pliers. Disconnect the uh, clamp and then push it back and then you'll be able to remove the, uh, the hose. So the hose is probably um, stuck a little tight, so you're gonna wanna just slightly um, go back and forth to loosen it. So you're just easing it out. All right, so this is the larger part of the hose you can see it leaked um, some fluid which was trapped inside but it's out on that end and then over here as well so it's gonna clamp into um, this larger piece right here so when you install it again you're just gonna clamp it in right to that and hold it in place We're now removing the upper part of the hose. Pull back on the clamp. And then just ease it out. This is our replacement piece. 
So you need to take the clamp from the hose that you just removed because you can tell right here, um, these are all new clamps, but they don't give you the additional clamps to connect it to the car. So you need to take your old clamp um, and then use that to connect this back to the rest of your car. So. So just pop that back in and then you're going to move the clamp across so it's locked in place. We're now putting the main hose back, connecting it to the engine. So you're gonna to wanna to ease it in. Get it all the way to the end and then clamp it shut. Okay, so the hose is now fully um, connected. One clamp here, one up top, and then one down there on the bottom. So we need to put the battery back in and then put in uh, the fluid. So for the coolant, just using this uh, Peak 5050. It's about 10 bucks uh, per gallon. So we're just gonna put that in. So it's been f um, filled with the coolant and you can see that it is hitting that full marker. Okay, so you're gonna wanna put the battery back in, tighten everything up. So the screw right here, the one up here, as well as the connections to the battery. And then once that's done, you're gonna put that front of uh, that plastic plate. Okay, so the car is now running, and what you'll notice is that the levels drop. So once you start the car again, check your coolant levels because it's going to drop and you're gonna to need to add a little bit more coolant. But again, the hose, the new hose and the connector, everything is installed. And if you did it yourself for parts and the coolant, that cost about $40. The estimate that I had from the mechanic was about $200.